So, on, on behalf of, uh, of the president of our university, the, the Federal University of Rio Grande do Norte, Professor Angela Cruz, I would like to welcome all, all of you to this inauguration full wave inversion workshop. <coughs> so, my warmest greetings to, to all of you. Uh, I consider this moment as the starting point of a fruitful partnership. Imperial College, University of British Columbia, and UFRN are going to join efforts in a process of cross-fertilization that certainly will improve non-linearly our strengths in order to reach the goal. Yeah. What's the goal? The goal is to advance in, in the complex problem of full wave inversion. It's really a difficult task. It's a challenge uh, that's defying the researchers from the field in, of oil exploration for a long time. But recent investigation progress from a few groups, and especially from Imperial College and from UBC, give us the impression of a near victory. They are making important achievements. We, from UFRN, together with other Brazilian groups, in particular, the team of Cimatec Senai from Bahia. We are joining now to this that I would like to call Research Army. Maybe we can make an analogy with the other facts that occurred more than 70 years ago during the Second World War. At that time, Brazil joined the Allies, and Natal became, became a war outpost. Uh, during the, uh, the years uh, 43, 44, and 45, Natal was the more busiest air base in the world, carrying with the uh, airplanes taking off, carrying supplies to Africa, to the, uh, uh, the front of the Allies in Africa. Maybe in this war against the inversion problem, we can do the same. Maybe also we can make a, another analogy uh, 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 comparing this relatively small uh, problem with the uh, Manhattan Project that constructed the, the atomic bomb during the war. But um, in, uh, in the relative uh, scale, maybe the, this comparison, comparison is correct. Uh, I would like to say that we are, we are fortunate in being in the company of, of the, these two leading universities in this field, IC and UBC. Uh, FWI is a, really a very complex uh, uh, 
problem to solve. And this composed of, of many interconnecting uh, other problems. We have tackled some of those. Yeah, I would like to say that we have a lot to learn in, in the other problem that you have not worked yet. But we hope to contribute with our views and our insights. Uh, in order to uh, reinforce our team, we are trying to gather the best researchers from, from our university and from other federal universities in this region, recruiting specialists from several fields, physicists, mathematicians, geologists, geophysicists, computer scientists, engineers, and so on. We are also selecting new students and postdoc from, uh, uh, to form a strong workforce. Maybe to make uh, this moment more informal, uh, I would like to make some few provocations. Uh, the inauguration session is a moment of optimism, a moment to dream, to think ahead, to, to think about the future. And and uh, th this is a field of, of uh, uh, advances and progress, and we have to take advantage also from the other fields of science. So maybe now I, I can show a, a few slides. I will, to be honest, I have to say that our university is a new university, as most of Brazilian universities. We, we have been created in 1958. And uh, one characteristic of our university is the vocation for petroleum research. We, we have done that, that because our state is one of the major oil producers in Brazil. So we have tried by all the ways before uh, to uh, contact some companies to do something, to improve our production. Uh, this is, is maybe uh, this initial uh, measures maybe date 30 years or more. And some progress have been reached. Uh, in in the, the year 2000, when the uh, go government launched the, the round, the, the first round of City Petro uh, for research, our university was ranked second. Only uh, after the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. And now we have many research groups, maybe 50 research groups in the field of petroleum. This is only a little sample of a, a a building inside the campus. This building uh, houses our group, part of our group. We have, indeed, we have another lab.
here we cannot see everybody, but this register uh, a good moment when one of our students that is now a professor here has win the Petrobras uh, Award for Petroleum Exploration in 2004. The Yusun Tabar is here. And it, it, this is only to show the progress th that we have made. I think that the Yusun is in the left side, but by some reason, uh, uh, the slide is bigger than, than the screen. And now, uh, Felix has to, to see this picture. He's there. This is the, the beginning of a, a good partnership and fruitful. This was a meeting here on this beach, in a, in a hotel in this beach in 2007, seven, uh, called the Complexity in the Oil Industry. And uh, by a good coincidence, uh, the two universities have joined uh, to work at that time. UBC and Imperial College. Most of the people uh, from, a, from, from ab abroad came from uh, Vancouver and from London and are there. Maybe you can recognize some of these people. Peter King is there and uh, many people from Imperial College and also Felix and uh, uh, his colleagues from UBC. So after that, uh, many meetings ha have been held here. So it, it, this is only to show the progress th that you have done. But as a provocation, I would like to, to point some out, outsider subjects or maybe different subjects. Uh, we, we like to dream. For instance, I think that in a few years, there will be a viable new acquisition device. Uh, there will be a revolution in data acquisition for oil exploration. And uh, we are going to have high precision tomography. And uh, we are going to have also powerful collimated and coherent wave beams. And at many frequencies that can penetrate the earth. And, and we, we would uh, uh, take advantage of nanostructure device, very thin at the nano scale and uh, capable of uh, working in a very hot and uh, under uh, high pressures. And the uh, other thing that, uh, as a physicist, I believe is that we are going to have uh, methods uh, that uh, are based essentially on the concept of entropy. Other dream, maybe are, I am a, only a, a dreamer, is that we can improve geostatistics from this standard Kriging for uh, more realistic uh, geostatistics that take in consideration the uh, uh, the correlations and the uh, statistical distribution of, of the rocks. And uh, finally, something that's happening now is the integration of FWI with well logged data and the statistical correlations and all other 
other data that's available. Maybe to go on with the provocation, I would like to, to show that some of these streams are already next door or next day. Here is one of those. Probably all of you know about. It's called the Caesar or sound ampl amplification by this stimulated emission of radiation. It's the, maybe it's the grandchild of the laser. The laser uses light, but this device uses uh, uh, mechanical vi vibration, uses sound. The lasers use photons, but this device uses phonons. The, uh, there are uh, some universities that are doing that now. One in England and one in, in the USA and there are others in Europe. And what is possible to do? It's possible. What we can we do? We can do high precision instruments. Why? Because we are going to have a powerful source of radiation, of, of phonons, very coherent with a very precise frequency, very collimated and, and very powerful uh, at different frequencies, even at higher frequencies, uh, gigahertz or terahertz is possible. This is not available commercially yet, but exists. And, and uh, the idea is, is the same idea of the laser. You pump energy to uh, generate uh, radiation, uh, and this radiation uh, adds on uh, keeping the same phase. So it, it will be a very powerful beam, uh, uh, stationary or, or pulsed, and, and this will change everything. We, we can have high precision tomography. We, we can do the same thing that we do today uh, with uh, seismic waves. Uh, uh, and, and for seismic waves, we have no, not so much control, but here is uh, a very controlled source of radiation. Even we can do something that's drilling microwaves. And in, inside these microwaves, we can penetrate nanostructures devices to, to look for hydrocarbons and, 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 and do many things. So, so these things are next door. Maybe we, we have not paid attention. So, I think that this will cause some kind of revolution in data acquisition. But let, let's show, let, let's change a little bit for the field of entropy. And I will uh, use an example, not from seismic, but from electromagnetic waves. This is, here is a signal uh, of GPS. But GPS under uh, very real circumstance. GPS in general has a narrow line uh, in, in the plot. And uh, this is the GPS that he, we use to drive cars and, and to get orientation, and in some places even to land the airplanes. But near the geomagnetic equator, some strange uh, phenomena 
happened uh, during the, some night uh, uh, correlated with the uh, uh, solar burst. So during this phenomenon that's called spring death, we have strong fluctuations, very strong fluctuations. This data here is, was collected by a colleague from, from this universe uh, called, called Bonelli. Uh, and we have never published. And uh, they also here has analyzed this data using a uh, new proposed entropy for finite res resolution. And uh, we expected that uh, for this data, that's, it, this is it's really a, a data scattered by the regularities of the ionosphere. The ionosphere is, is a layer uh, in the at atmosphere. Uh, 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 and and the, during this phenomenon, the, the, there is a, a plasma instability. It's a, so these fluctuations, strong fluctuations, look like a uh, very random uh, data. And they also has applied this method of entropy to calculate the entropy of this data. The data, I repeat, is related to some uh, model uh, that has scattered the electromagnetic waves. So let's see what's the entropy of this data. And some strange thing happens. Uh, in the region of bigger fluctuations, there was a drop the entropy, very sensitive drop of the entropy. And we, our first idea was to think that this uh, new entropy was wrong because we have more fluctuation. But think a little bit more, we, we discovered that that the measure was correct because the entropy of the, uh, the structure that has, has produced the, the data are very well organized. So we are indirectly measuring the, the organized structure of the scatters. And, and those scatters, even they ha don't have a, a fixed geometry. The geometry is changing with the time. There is a cascade of, of instabilities during this uh, plasma instability. Really, is this cascade is triggered by uh, the railo railing tailor instability. So, let's show other data in a different time. Here is it's another situation where spring death appears. Here is uh, the normal uh, GPS, and here we have two patches of fluctuation. This this is analogous to the data of, of seismic problem. And I will show now the entropy. So, exactly in the period of strong fluctuation that we suppose strong randomness, the entropy increases. So, but what is going on. We are measuring here 
indirectly the entropy of this of of, of the of, of the scatters. So only to see again these data. In, in the upper plots are the data. In the lower plots are the entropy. And after that, we can ask some questions. For instance, can we apply this idea to seismic case? I think so. Uh, other question, low entropy measures evaluation of this data means that the model can be transformed to sparse representation. I think that the, the idea is also yes. The answer is also yes. And other thing, what happens if, if the entropy is high? These are some questions. Well, I, I, I think that I have abused your, of all of your goodwill, but to, to end, I would like uh, to thank you for coming. We hope that this meeting will be very productive and uh, that uh, it will generate fruitful discussion and to promote exchange of experience. Also, we want you a nice stay, having the opportunity to visit uh, uh, our tourist points, even the bigger cash should be of the world, and uh, to appreciate our beaches, to taste our regional food, and to enjoy the hospitality of our people. Thank you.